everyone, so in this topic um, today um, I'll be discussing to you about how to cope at university with a disability. Now I won't be talking to you guys much um, about it but I will leave a link um, at the bottom which is um, where my blog will be so um, everything that you um, need to know about how I cope at university. Um, it will be up there so you can go and check it um, out as well. But um, but yeah, um, recently I got to interview three people uh, from the University of Brighton who are currently still there um, studying and I got to interview Rachel, Mark and Natalie. Um, so I really hope you enjoy watching this interview. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy, like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already so you do not miss out on any upcoming videos that I have. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that you enjoy the interview. Why don't you introduce yourself? I, I'm Mark, I study MCOM Software Engineering and I have got ASD. Uh, well, my name is Natalie O'Connor. I'm an English language student at the University of Brighton, and this is my first year. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm doing Eng a degree in English la language and literature at the University of Brighton. Um, I'm currently in my third year, um, finishing soon, going on to do my ma a master's and then a PhD, hopefully. Uh, describe what disability you actually have. Um, I have autism, which is a communication difficulty, and uh, it means I struggle to read nonverbal language and communication uh, with people is a bit difficult at times. SD stands for Autistic Spectrum uh, Disorder. It's one of the more high-functioning things. Uh, things. Uh, or for those people who don't know, autism is caused by white matter in the, br uh, in the brain. I've researched this. Uh, it's, it's, and it has some, uh, some uh, coordination difficulties, like uh, difficult catechisms, etc. Et social difficulties, not being able to understand, uh, and, uh, understand social cues. Cues, uh, although like arguably because of that, we're more honed in to understand social cues because we look, we look that much more thoroughly on the social cues because we don't have that natural ability. Uh, really, some inability to understand sarcasm at times, uh, at times like things like that, thing, like social difficulties and ability to organize itself. I can't really remember much of a time where I was... Because when you're quite young, autism yeah. doesn't affect you as much because little kids can kind of do stupid things and parents are like, oh, they'll grow out of it, right? And then because they diagnosed me quite early, it wasn't like, oh, why aren't you being an adult now or why aren't you doing this correctly? It's just, oh, well, she's autism, so we'll figure this out kind of thing. So how have you found the support um, at the university? Um, I've been quite lucky in the fact that I've had um, a mentor with um, autism as well. So she was able to deal with issues perhaps in a way that a neurotypical couldn't have dealt with um, as, as, as efficiently. Um, and I just think overall that was beneficial um, to the way that I coped at university and the way that I then came to her with future issues um, that I then encountered. Um, but it got quite bad at one point. I was going to drop out in first year mm. due to um, flatmates being disgusting and really unclean. And it just got overwhelming um, and I didn't know how else to deal with it, so my reaction would be to drop out, but actually um, having a mentor helped me um, deal with that and help me move flat so I could stay at university and continue my studies. And here you are now? And here I am now, yeah. <laughs> like, for me, I was just very lucky to be at home because I had my own environment and I had everything there mm. that I needed, and I was just able to just travel into uni whenever I needed it. Well, I, move, I, I live in Kent, so um, I had to travel in. Uh, if I was to do that, quite a fair amount. So um, I actually quite found, I found moving out um, exciting, but also yeah. quite scary. Um, but the independence that I gained from that was, um, do you know what I mean? I feel like much more independent. I can do things, you know, things that have come up previously that I thought I couldn't do um you know I just think about all the things I've overcome so far and just actually go with a break it down it's not too hard um but yeah so move but I think moving out of home was definitely a, a good thing for me so what top tips can you give to newcomers um who are going into university with disability or anyone in general to those going in with autism first I want to class as a disability uh, disability because Autism is part of who we are. Yeah. It's not a disability because you know it's 
I've talked to some, uh, some, some of his students, including the current head of mass society, of the mass society, the bodybuilding society, yeah. Iran, who's autistic as well. We both have a consensus on this. It's a gift because, uh, it's a gift because we see the world in a different way that no one else does, make connections uh, uh, with things in the world that no one else does, has idea, and we can have ideas that no one else does. Yeah. And this does. That's not a disability, that's a gift. A gift. And don't ever let, and my advice would be for people going into uni, uh, or anyone out there with autism, with autism, don't ever let someone's opinion of you come of, become your reality. No. Yeah. Uh, don't let anyone, anyone tell you that you can't do things, yeah. and in fact you can, you just learn in a different way. That's true, uh, that's true. Find out schedules yeah um and, and get yourself into your own routine i found that that's my first year was quite disorientating um because i hadn't i hadn't it got myself into a proper routine um i was i found myself my sleep pattern was getting itself quite out of control um so i found that actually get myself into a regular routine day in day out found it gave my life some structure and it helped with some of the anxiety around you know getting everything done organizing work um it, you know having a routine that we've got work hours scheduled into that is really helpful so I'd say, you know, first of all, first and foremost, get yourself a routine as soon yeah. as possible. But also be open to the fact that this can change. But at, you know, try and get yourself like a basic schedule that you stick to every day. Um, and Did you find that organisation was also the key? Organize, to... I find organisation helps yeah. me deal with stress. Um, like packing your bag the night before. So yeah. if you know that you've got <clears throat> this, this and this, yeah. you have to make sure you've got all, all of that. All the things that you yeah. need, yeah. So, yeah, basically, I'd just say organisation and routine is, is paramount to, to keeping on top of everything. And keeping lists as well. Get yourself loads of little notebooks and pens just all around the place. So if you, you know, like, I used to wake up at three in the morning and just, oh, I've got so many things to do the next day. And, you know, then worry about not getting sleep on top of that. So I'd get myself a little notebook and pen and I keep it one side of my yeah. bed so that I can just write it down and then go back to sleep and then deal with that tomorrow morning. Um, so I, what key skills have you learned at being at university? Um, I mean... Basically, most of the key things I've learned are from my course, which I think will help me with a job that I want later on in life. But I don't. I think most of the stuff that I've discovered, that at least autistic-wise, I sort of discovered before in my previous university experience. So, um, like for the key skills you said about um, organization, organization yeah. which is of the key, one of the key. Yeah, but that wasn't something I learned at uni. No. That was something I sort of developed in high school. Mm, and I think networking as well. I yeah. think that's definitely the key. Um, especially on your first day, you want to make sure that you're safe in your own environment, but also meeting new people who will be with you for the next three years. Yeah, another good tip that I find is that find out who your counsellors are, who your um, tutors are and things yeah, like that. and you, your support as yeah, well. Yeah, because, you know, normally during the beginning of the year, I'm normally quite fine, and if I do have any emergencies or something like that, it, it's much easier for me to go to them for help if I know what their faces are and who they are, instead of being like, oh, I'm really stressed out or I'm really depressed, and then I don't want to go get help. But if I've met them already, I've talked to them in a good mood, then I know that they've sort of been introduced to me, so I don't feel less, in, I, I feel less intimidated about going to them for help. Yeah. Well, well, being at university, I've been doing quite a, f a man uh, quite a few many things. Uh, I've, uh, I've recently partnered up with Ra uh, I've partnered up with Rachel. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure, as you probably know, as to co-lead the group, uh, to co-lead the group, uh, to co-lead the group. Um, uh, group. I learned a lot about compassion by doing that, by doing that, patience. Because of dealing with the members, uh, members and disagreements with or disagreements with Rachel, or disagreements with Rachel, start. Uh, I've entered the business co uh, business competition, uh, competition which I got highly commended for, but at the same time didn't win. Oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> gutted, uh, and some of the and some other things, and I'm an aspiring entrepreneur, and the one thing I I, I learned that came, uh, from from uh, from for that kind of mindset. Can be applied for everything else is fail forward. Me meaning, if you don't succeed at what you you really want to do, you know, what you really want to do, try and try again. Yeah, never give up. Never give up, and if necessary, don't be afraid to piss people off. No. To get what you want. Um, what career are you hoping to achieve after you finish uni? Um, I basically want to go into autism research. 
um, and revolutionise the theory um, that is autism or the, 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 the um, pre preconception that autism is currently known as, which is a is a deficit that is mostly referred to, but I don't think it is that. So I basically to, plan to dedicate my life to changing the yeah. rhetoric around autism, around basically everything about what it is as a condition. So, because as a career, I'm hoping to go into um, presenting either for film, TV, or children, uh, which mm. is why I'm doing this. Um, but um, also hoping to take my ability into the media and show people that despite, yeah, we have it, but it doesn't mm. mean we can't do these but things. But that's basically um, what I want to do, is, is yeah. challenge mis um, preconceived ideas and misconceptions about actually what autism is, and actually, um, you know, I, I had it a lot in first year, I was like, oh, you're autistic, you can't go clubbing, you can't do this, and I was actually, oh, actually, I can do these things. Um, you know, for another thing is I drink alcohol. Um, a lot of people are like, well, you can't drink alcohol because you're autistic, and I'm like, well, why not? Um, you know, for, for the same reason people get freaked out about the, when I say I go clubbing and things like that, because they don't expect someone that's autistic because they think someone that's autistic can't can't do anything and that's that's simply not the case no it just means that there we are just have, things just, that have to be yeah. put in place that makes our trip a little bit easier exactly so if you could change uh one thing um so when you had your very first day and how you are now what is the one thing that you could change um I don't know, I feel like things have been on a pretty even keel. Like, it, there's nothing that I can be like, oh, well, I wish I'd done that differently, or I wish that had happened differently. Yeah. I think in, in general, uh, even though I am autistic, I actually, I, it might be because I'm American, I'm very like, hey, nice to meet you, I'm Natalie, what's going on, kind of thing. And I think, for me, that makes it a bit easier to make new friends, or yeah. at least start new acquaintances when I move somewhere. So I can't think of anything that I'm like, oh, I did that wrong. I think for me, I've learned not to panic as much. Um, now that I'm getting older, um, it's like I'm 23 at the moment and I think three years ago I was a little nervous, obviously that knocked my confidence, but when I was getting to my second and third year the confidence just grew and I became a bit more independent, so definitely on my first day I think if I hadn't panicked or got a bit nervous and um, it would have shown that I had a bit more confidence in myself. And I wouldn't rely too much on the support in my first year that I that I didn't really need as much in my second and third year. Um, but the great thing was that they were always there when I needed them. So, mm -hmm. and I'm glad I had it as well. What could the support um, or teachers do differently to help you or other people at uni? Oh, student union experience comes into play with this. Uh, comes into play with this. Uh, Something, something I've learned from my horrifying experience with students in with the union, uh, uh, union is people, teachers, who, teachers, union workers, anyone who has even one autistic person in their class or in their, uh, uh, or in their charge sort of thing, one of their charges to support, support they need to know what autism is. Yeah. They need to have. They need to at least have read, read one book about it, about what difficulties people have, uh, and people have, and also understand, and also understand that, oh, while autism is unique for each individual person, there are some common traits, and they need to be respectful of those common traits. Have we recommend? University uh, students having you know um, so autistic university students having autistic mentory uh, mentors, um, as again there are just some things that will be obvious to other aspies but not yeah. to neurotypicals and at the end of the day if you're in a situation where you're in a high stress situation you need to go and talk to someone about it the last thing you want to do is to explain why the texture of a desk makes you want you know, maybe makes your skin crawl or why certain lights make you get get headaches and things like that like you that you don't need to explain that on top of if you're already stressed because sometimes you just can't articulate that so having someone that actually just understands people when you do you don't have to feel like you have to explain it further, do you know what I mean? So you just say, I'll oh, text with the desk, and they go, say no more, I'm on it, I understand, do you know, yeah. and that sort of um, being on the same page. So I would heavily recommend that for universities, if they have autistic students, try and get as many autistic mentors as you possibly can and get their opinions on any Aspie social groups, any, do you know what I mean? Like, 
Um, Because I I run, I now run the university autism social group, which is um, a little group for university students. And if anyone wants it, I'll leave the link at the bottom um, so you can go and check it out. But yeah, so it's a little um, little group. We all get together once a week, and we also do activities outside of that. Um, But it's basically uh, we just just sort of hang out in a sense with a sensory environment that's pleasing to everyone. Um, So like we turn the TVs off so it's not too loud, Um, and we we play cards against humanity. Sometimes we play pool. Um, but sometimes we just all talk, um, pretty much like just friends hanging out normally, um, except the only difference is we're all autistic.